everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for October 3rd, 2022. This is the time of the week we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I am Katni, and I am sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython-dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there is a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you wish to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes doc to accompany the meeting and recording. It contains timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run 45 to 60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we'll post a link to the next meeting's notes document in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc so you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. Uh, note that next week's CircuitPython weekly meeting will be held on Tuesday. There is a U.S. holiday on Monday, um, so we will revisit that at the end, but it was a good time to mention it. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, which is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. Second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka, which is a statistical overview of the entire project. The third part is hug reports, which is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks in our community are doing and recognize the awesome folks uh, we have around us. The fourth part is status updates, which is an opportunity to take a couple minutes and talk about what you've been doing since last week uh, or the last meeting and then what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And the fifth part is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. Uh, the topics can come out of status updates or be something identified ahead of time. And with that, I will get started with community news. CircuitPython 8.0.0 Beta 1 it has been released, uh, which is a beta release for 8.0.0. It's relatively stable, but there will be further additions and fixes before the final release. Uh, in the notes doc, there is a list of um, notable changes since 7.3.0. I won't read them off as um, a lot of them have probably been read off previously. Uh, if you want to read the full release notes, there is a link in the notes doc to um, the GitHub to GitHub where the release is hosted. Next up, uh, Hacktoberfest 2022. It's here. Whether it's your first time or not, it's time to hack out four or more pristine open source project pull and merge requests. Uh, as of October, DigitalOcean sponsors Hacktoberfest. The first 40,000 participants, maintainers, and contributors who complete Hacktoberfest can elect to receive one of two prizes, a tree planted in their name or the Hacktoberfest 2022 t-shirt. CircuitPython wants your Hacktoberfest contributions. We've labeled a number of issues as Hacktoberfest, and the full, full list is available on circuitpython.org. And your Hacktoberfest participation is not limited to these issues. Um, it's just that we highlight uh, a number of good first issues uh, to have some place to start. And finally, the project of the week is turn your houseplant into a pet. Phyto is a project by Coders Cafe Tech, which incorporates a Raspberry Pi Zero and sensors to turn your basic houseplant into a pet. Phyto can show six different emotions based on its interpretation of three sensor measuring soil moisture, temperature, and light levels. It uses the Raspberry Pi 02W running Python with the Adafruit Blinka compatibility software allowing use of CircuitPython code. And there are uh, two links to um, info about that in the notes talk. Um, so that has been uh, community news. 
uh, the circuit is a preview of the circuit python weekly newsletter which is a circuit python community run newsletter emailed every tuesday the complete archives are available on adafruitdaily.com uh, that's adafruitdaily.com slash category slash circuit python it highlights the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. You can contribute your own newser project by editing next week's draft on GitHub, submitting a pull request, or you may also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter, or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And thanks to Anne for putting together this newsletter every week. It's always full of amazing stuff. Next up is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. Uh, it's basically the project by the numbers, uh, so we can get an idea of the health of the project aside from uh, the individual things we're all up to. I will uh, start by reading overall issues and then our overall information, and then um, we'll move on to talk about the core, the libraries, and Blinka individually. So overall, we had 40 pull requests merged from 17 authors. Some names I don't recognize are Semi Ninja, Flom84, Patrick S. Larson8, Isaac Ben, and Julian Orteil. And we had five reviewers on those 40, 40 pull requests. Uh, in terms of issues, we had 25 closed issues by eight people and 18 opened by 15 people. So we are down a little bit, which is good. And the final note here is uh, assigned Hacktoberfest label to zero issues. Um, that's because no new good first issues have been uh, added. And um, the, all of the initial issues were assigned uh, on the first. Next up, I will hand it over to Dan to talk about the core. OK, thank you, Katni. Uh, <clears throat> so in the past week, there were 18 pull requests merged to the core by eight authors. Uh, Flom84 is a new contributor. I'm not sure if they're a new contributor this week or last week, but they're new. Thank you. There are two reviewers, Jeff and myself. There are currently 18 open poll requests. Um, there were eight issues closed by three people and 10 issues opened by nine people. We haven't assigned Hacktoberfest label to any issues, but there are several good first issues, or at least one that I know of, and so we will set that up. Um, there are 575 open issues right now. Um, in those issues, there are zero assigned to the 7.3.x release, so we're not planning any new 7.3 release in the near future. Um, there, are eight there are 35 issues open for 8.0.0. And there are seven issues open for past 8.00, but in somewhere in 8, we hope, 8xx. There are 20 issues uh, open that are labeled for libraries. Usually those are library suggestions. And there are 506 issues open in the long term, which may be enhancements or minor bugs that don't need immediate fixing. And there are seven issues labeled as support. Uh, we should probably clean some of those up. Often those can be those discussions can eventually be moved to the forum or to Discord. And there were two issues not assigned a, a milestone. And that's it uh, for right now. I just, as, as noted, uh, 800 beta one was released. Um, Jeff will tell you more in his um, notes about uh, the Pico W support that's in there. We caught up with about five weeks of stuff. So, uh, Feel free to test AOO Beta 1 uh, and use it if you're uh, willing. Thank you. OK. Thanks, Dan. Next up, I will talk about the libraries. This applies to every Adafruit CircuitPython library, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a couple extras, including our community bundle and our cookie cutter. Across all of those repositories, we had 22 pull requests merged by 10 different authors and four reviewers. Uh, in terms of the age of these, four of them were 12 days or older, including one that was 37 days, which is good to see, means we're still getting through older PRs um, and by the look of the list, keeping up with quite a number of new PRs. So currently we have, across all those repositories, 37 open pull requests. There were 16 issues closed by five people and seven open by six people leaving us with 590 open issues, 
we have 125 labeled good first issues, which at the moment are also labeled Hacktoberfest. Uh, if you're new to everything and you want to get started contributing, um, good first issues are a great place to start. If you want to contribute in general, circuitpython.org slash contributing is where you want to head. Um, there are all, there's all this information and more. There are a list of open pull requests, uh, a list of open issues and some library infrastructure issues. Um, if you are new, if you want to contribute code or documentation and you're new to everything, check out the issues list and search it by good first issue. Um, these are issues we've identified as uh, good for folks who are getting started or are new to contributing to CircuitPython. Um, if you want to get started reviewing, check out the list of open pull requests. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, um, go ahead and take a look at the code. Let us know what you think. Um, leave a comment, and that's always super helpful. And once uh, you get more into that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries, and there's a short list of updated libraries in the notes doc, um, which I will not read off. Uh, we are participating in Hacktoberfest this year. We have for a number of years now, and it's always been uh, a positive experience. Um, so the Hacktoberfest labeled issues are good first issues. If you are interested in something more complicated, you can still contribute to uh, by, by checking out issues in um, for more that are more complicated, um, and you still will get credit for it uh, regardless. Um, for Hacktoberfest, but um, the Hacktoberfest issues, if you search by Hacktoberfest, are all good first issues. So if those interest you, feel free to check them out. If you are looking for a little more of a challenge, um, don't worry that it's not labeled Hacktoberfest. It will still get you uh, your PRs. And uh, that's what I've got. So with that, I will turn it over to Melissa to talk about Blinka. Hello, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had zero pull requests merged, and there are currently seven open pull requests. Um, there was one closed issue by one person and one open by one person. It cur currently, none of the issues have a Hacktoberfest label, and uh, there were eighty. There are currently eighty four open issues. There were 12,411 Pyrelles downloads in last month, and we are at 91 boards, and that's it. Perfect. Thanks, Melissa. And that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Next up is Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight uh, folks that are doing amazing things uh, and to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Um, this will be held as a round robin. I will start and then I will go through the list in the notes document, uh, read them off in order. If there are folks that are lurking or text only, I will read those myself and then hand it over to uh, folks who are currently voice participating to read their own. So first up, I have a hug for Naradoc. Um, I was seriously wishing that the support matrix could be searched by boards that do not have a particular module included. Um, and it turns out that was previously implemented. Uh, so uh, that was a good um, enhancement request because no code needed to be written. Um, so thank you Generadoc for already having implemented this thing and now I know how to use it. Uh, hug report to Deshapu for providing me with the code to print out a series of ASCII characters using CircuitPython. Um, I had code that did it in Arduino, but it did not translate. So um, Deshipu helped me out with that. And to Maker Melissa for providing guidance on a guide update. Um, it's a huge guide that involves a lot of different pieces of hardware, and um, she basically wrote the whole thing. So I worked with her on updating one section of it to make sure that it still fit with the rest of it. That's what I've got. So next up is Anecdata, who is lurking, has a hug report to Jeffler for all of the work so far getting Pico W Wi-Fi up and running. It's great to have Wi-Fi working on a new port. Next up, I have some notes from C. Grover, who said a hug report for Tectric for splainin' git concepts during the community help desk stream came away with some very useful hints. And next up is Dan. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, first, thanks to Jeff for um, fixing some Pico W Wi-Fi issues on Friday and Saturday. Um, that meant that I was able to do a release of 8.0 Beta 1 on Saturday. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, thanks to Anecdata, who was doing testing of those fixes. That was really helpful. Uh, thanks to Jeff also for automating the formatting of inline documentation that we um, use in CircuitPython. That goes to read the docs. Uh, now it's that, that that documentation is auto automatically formatted with black. Thanks to Unexpected Maker for uh, helping with debugging some puzzling ESP32 S3 problems. And thanks to MicroDev1 who continues to contribute fixes and reviews. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. Next up is DJ Devin3. I have a hub report for Dan H and Unexpected Maker for helping me troubleshoot a nasty uh, UN Feather S3 bug. Still haven't gotten to the bottom of it yet. But still working on that. Uh, hub report to Scare and Hem in Discord for the advice on how to possibly repair a Feather S2 where I accidentally dropped a solder blob right on the voltage regulator faster. And a hub report to all the core developers for releasing a new version this week. I report to Tanu for a very helpful um, PyPico video. Even though it's a year old, it's it was still very relevant and very helpful for the project that I'm working on. Uh, I report to Tetric for helping me figure out some Git issues in preparation for Hack Tetricus. And to everyone else working on new projects and documentation. Excellent. Next up is Foamy Guy. Thanks, Katni. Uh, this week I have hug report for Jepler for working on the Pico W, uh, getting support going for that. Thank you to Dan um, and anybody else who made contributions since the last beta uh, for, of course, getting the new beta.1 released. I've um, been trying that out on a couple of different devices today. Um, thank you to uh, Shultronics GitHub user. Uh, this person investigated an issue with the Turtle library where it wasn't uh, working the same way on Blinka Display I.O. Uh, as it was on CircuitPython. Um, they tracked down that issue, uh, came up with a fix, and submitted that, as well as tested some additional tweaks on that. So thank you to them. And um, uh, thank you to Tectric as well for leading the recent community help desk and Hacktoberfest kickoff. Um, and that's what I have this week. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Jeff. Hello, just as soon as I can find that unmute button. Uh, so I wanted to thank Anecdata especially, but everybody who provided testing and feedback on the Pico W Wi-Fi functionality. Um, as a code author, I get kind of tired of it by the time it's done, and my testing can be a little bit cursory. So people putting it through the paces for real with real code, or even with testing code, is super helpful. Uh, thanks to Paul SK for dogged pursuit of some problems with I2C target including making a pull request into the core to fix the documentation, as well as a flaw in the code. And uh, to Bill88T for adding the Pico W to circuitpython.org. Really appreciated uh, that I didn't need to do that. And a hug in anticipation of all the Hacktoberfest contributions that the community will be offering. I know you are working with us at all times of the year, but uh, this is a, a time to prioritize those contributions and, uh, you know, to just pitch in and do stuff. And finally, for everyone I've forgotten, a group hug. Thanks, Jeff. Next up is Maker Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Lost my place. Uh, I want to give a hug to you, Katni, for updating the quad alphanumeric backpack guide and group hug everyone else. Excellent. Um, so next up, I have notes from three folks that I will read off. First up is Paul Cutler, a uh, hug report for myself, Katni, for uh, help with the community help desk blog post at the last minute, to Tectric for running the community help desk last Thursday and for Hacktober, for Hacktoberfest kickoff, and to everyone who stopped by and a group hug. Next up, I have notes from Tectric, who has a hug report for DJ Devin3, C. Grover, Keith the E, and Paul Cutler, and anyone else. I missed that tuned in for CircuitPython uh, community help desk stream last week. I especially enjoyed chatting with you all after the tutorial. To Katni for the community help desk blog post, as well as the nice banner image for it. To Hem and Mad Bodger for the feedback on posting things in the Discord server and making sure the right info goes in just the right places. 
to Foamy Guy for all the reviews and streams. They're always fascinating to watch and a group hug. And finally, I have uh, notes from Snaky Maker Cat, who has a hug report for Foamy Guy, Jepler, and Dan H for being so awesome and helping during my first contributions to Circuit Python, and a group hug. And that is hug reports. Next up is status updates. This is an opportunity for us to sync up on what we've all been up to since the last meeting and what we're going to be up to until the next meeting. So take a couple minutes, talk about uh, each of those things. And um, this is also an opportunity for quick tips and tricks or questions to be answered. Uh, anything that turns out not to be quick can be bumped to in the weeds. So I will uh, start and then I will read through the list. So last week, I finished up the QT update for the quad alphanumeric backpack stemma revision, submitted a now merged fix to update the pin order on the Grand Central M4 to match the silk. Um, there are multiple names for each pin, and uh, sometimes we, um, it, this may have actually happened before we decided to start making it all match the silk so that the, the top one in the list was the one that uh, looks like the pin number on the board. Um, but, uh, there were six pins that had, um, the alternate name coming first. So that, that was fixed and then continued working on the LTR 329 and 303 guide this week. Uh, first thing up is to finish the final additions to the Wi-Fi mailbox guide, which is to add an external antenna to the completed project to show another way to do it. Um, it was pointed out that the small antenna Velcro or, uh, stuck into the uh, mailbox that I had for the project probably wouldn't work in a um, metal mailbox. So uh, that's why we need to show that there's uh, the ability to add an external antenna. And I need to update the power usage graphs with the latest circuit Python build. Dan fixed an issue with uh, ESP32 um, power uh, usage and uh, during deep sleep. And these graphs um, currently are uh, not accurate with the um, currently not accurate with with the uh, fix. So I get to update that and uh, be done with that guide. Then I am going to test issue sixty six seventy six on the core, which is um, using pin alarm and time alarm together. It wasn't working. It worked in the mailbox project. So I will give it another test with shorter code to make sure that uh, it actually works and then close that issue. I would be finishing up the LTR 303-329 guide. I need to add the web, web hook to GitHub for um, read the docs to four library repositories. Uh, update the Metro Mini um, V2 or update the Metro Mini guide to have the Metro Mini V2 in it. And then I will be doing the new product guide for the PCF 8575, which is evidently like exactly like the another PCF chip, except that it has 16 pins. So that guide should go pretty quick because uh, most of it will be copy and paste. Next up, I have notes from C. Grover, who is text only. Since Microlab was dropped from the matrix portal distribution, I repactored palette fader to use list iteration instead, successfully tested the new version on 733 and 800 beta one. The revised version runs 25 to 30% slower than the Microlab version, but it is still an acceptable range for most applications. Both versions are available in the Palette Fader Community Bundle Library. And cooler weather, weather, which is less than 90 degrees Fahrenheit, means the landscaping project will be completed soon if the wildfire smoke dissipates. Just a three bag concrete project and one more yard of decorative stones to move before a dozen or so boulders arrive. After that, there will be ample time for music, electronics, and software projects. Thinking wishfully. Next up is Dan. Okay, uh, as mentioned, I released uh, Circuit Python 800 Beta One. That was on Saturday night. It includes a lot of uh, working P Pico W network code. Uh, Jeff will tell you more, but you can use it to HTTP and stuff. You can't do SSL yet, but that's in the works. Um, I did a lot of debugging of espressive chip power consumption during deep sleep. Uh, I found an idiosyncrasy in the way um, uh, pins are 
pin holding is done. So I got cons the consumption back down to the expected value of about 75 microamps by not asking for pin holds if I didn't need to ask for pin holds during deep sleep. I simplified the status bar enabling and disabling code in hopes of fixing some bugs that had to do with parcel connecting to the stat when the status bar was already uh, in process of being updated. It seems better, but uh, it might still have some problems. I have to recheck it. I did a lot of reviewing of PRs and other things. I wrote a draft page on the specific limitations for built-in modules per port, a draft learn guide page, uh, by going through the source code and finding all the not implemented error uh, stuff. And we talked during an internal meeting about whether to use this page, whether to maintain this page or put the stuff and read the docs or not. Um, if you have some specific comments about that, uh, let, let us know in CircuitPython Dev or in the issue that's open about it. And this week, I will continue to work on 800 issues, trying to get the number of bugs uh, down so we can, again, head toward a release. OK. Um, noticing a conversation in the text channel, um, you, you can put the Hacktoberfest, this is for Melissa, you can put the Hacktoberfest topic on your Blinka um, repositories and that's what will uh, eliminate the need for individual labels yep i actually went ahead and did that okay excellent all right next up is dj devon three thank you um let's see this week i got my tr cowbell uh, step sequencer uh, open source hardware certified i didn't get a t-shirt but i got a nice logo to put on the board still waiting for those new boards there would be 1.2 boards to arrive this week I finished a port of Becky Stern's YouTube subscriber counter from Node MCU to CircuitPython using the seven, it used the seven segment display backpacks and an ESP32 S2. I'm using the non stemma version of the displays. The stemma version didn't exist when I bought it two years ago. Procrastinated on a little bit. Uh, splicing the wires to make it work. Uh, I messed up and I messed up big. Uh, all of my future seven segment display purchases will now be Stemma version for sure. While working on the seven segment display uh, backpacks, I accidentally dropped a solder blob right onto the voltage regulator of the Feather S2. This morning, I used a hot air rework station for the first time ever and successfully repaired the board. It smoked a lot and some headers were melted, but still, I got it working. It was a success. And I resurrected that board, um, which I probably would have otherwise thrown away. Because once you drop the solder onto the regulator and a cap next to it, you can't melt it with a solder. It, the cap and the, the board traces dissipate the heat so fast that the solder just doesn't melt. Uh, let's see. What's next? No I, no progress on the lower messenger slash mailbox project. That's been shipped to the side started a new YouTube channel this week uh, that will focus on maker types of projects. I recorded my thing that I did with the rework air station and stuff on there as my first videos, just uh, test videos. This week, obviously, there was a hurricane, Hurricane Ian. Uh, I wasn't nearly as affected as the Ruiz brothers or others on the west coast of Florida, but I came through okay. Used Whippersnapper to log some neat pressure data and I have a spark fun weather station arriving this week to combine my LoRa knowledge and solar for wireless environment logging. So the next time there's a tropical storm or hurricane, I will get more data. Whippersnapper is now in Fahrenheit, so that's great. In case you've never been through a hurricane, the huge pressure drop will pop your ears like being on an airplane. And it's like a six, seven hour event if you go through an eyewall. And here's a graphic that shows that pressure drop. And the, the maximum pressure drop for this hurricane actually got down to 830 uh, millibars over in uh, Fort Myers. And I was on the complete opposite end of the state. So you, the data that I logged was minimal compared to what they went through. Uh, but it's still cool to be able to see that um, logged in Adafruit IO uh, with Whippersnapper. And that's all I got. Thanks, Seven. Next up is Foamy Guy. All right. Um, 
I did a fair amount of testing and reviewing this week. So uh, a couple of the notable ones were in the BME 280. Uh, there was a PR that refactored that a bit and helped eliminate some of the duplicated code. I got that tested last week. Um, I started investigating some strange status outputs from GitHub Actions. We noticed that the Actions workflows that generate screenshots uh, sometimes have weird sort of like success, but also cancel uh, outputs. And I learned a fair amount about GitHub Actions and came up with a couple of guesses, but I think there's still something a bit mysterious going on there. Um, tested a proposed fix for the turtle library that allows it to work the same on Blinka Display.io as it does on CircuitPython. Um, I uh, got some reviews in uh, this morning on uh, several typing PRs. And then uh, the other thing I've got going on today uh, so far is trying to learn a bit about the basics of mini MQTT. I've used it a few times with the simple tests, but um, don't have kind of like a foundational knowledge. So I'm trying to get up to speed enough to be able to effectively uh, review and test a fix that's in there and offer uh, some actual insight into um, that review process. So that's what I got going on. Thanks. Thank you. Next up is Jeff. Hi again. So last week, the PicoW support became much more solid, uh, including support for socket servers, and all that code made it into 800 beta 1. And again, a big thanks to testers, but especially for ANIC data, uh, for not only running the lengthy reliability tests, but for testing this, uh, initially testing the idea that changing this power saving number uh, register on the Wi-Fi chip can make a difference because it did, it did make a difference. Uh, we do still need more testing. So if you have a Pico W, please get it out and try out the wireless functionality. The main caveat is you can't connect to secure websites or other things that use SSL. But uh, whatever your experiences are, let us know on CircuitPython dev or via issues on GitHub. And those would be issues on the core, not on the library at this time. Uh, like if you're trying, if you're using Adafruit requests with the Pico W and you hit a problem, report it in the uh, Circuit Python repo, not in Adafruit requests. Uh, other stuff I did, I implemented black code formatting on the stubs in C comments. This is what we build the documentation of the core modules from. And I published a second keyboard guide with Circuit Python. This one was the Tandy 1000 keyboard, and I did it. Uh, sooner than I would have after the last keyboard uh, guide because I wanted to get it into the month of Sept Handy. This week, I am working on integrating embed TLS as the SSL library on the Pico W. And again, just like with sockets, MicroPython furnishes a great foundation. And I hope that after a straightforward conversion into the common health style, the basics will start to function. There is still a big question mark around the idea of including a certificate store with CircuitPython so initially, it will probably use SSL, but not actually verify the server certificate, which is really the same as no security. And there are a couple more bullet points uh, that are in the notes document. I'm not going to read it. It's kind of my internal narrative about my understanding of certificates and certificate stores so far. But the caveat is I'm not an expert on this, uh, certainly not at this point. So any correction of my misperceptions above are welcome. And also, now I haven't gone on you know, voice record um, as to whatever misconceptions I might have. So anyway, but we will be looking for the best way to do SSL on the Pico W within the limitations of the flash storage that we have available. And that is my focus for the week for sure. Thank you, Katni. You are welcome. Next up, maker Melissa. Hello. So last week I worked on wrapping up some of the, some more code editor changes. And I decided to take a break and start working on getting TensorFlow and Raspberry Pi guide working on Bullseye. And I got working on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, but now I'm trying to get running on the uh, Pi OS Lite. And I'm having some success, but I suspect uh, Pi Camera 2 may be having trouble running it on a 240 by 240 display. Um, other than that, I reviewed Ketney's Quad up in the American Backpack Guide update. And this week, I'm going to finish updating that TensorFlow guide and then need to test out the 128 by 64 feather wing uh, wired up to a non feather board and write a page on that. And uh, need to add a few missing boards to circuitpython.org and then hopefully get back to the uh, finishing up code.circuitpython.org. That's where I'm at. Thanks, Melissa. 
Next up, I have many, many notes uh, from Tectric, who is text only. Last week, uh, streamed for the community help desk on Thursday, showing people how to get set up from scratch for Hacktoberfest. Re-recorded said tutorial so I could streamline and improve it and posted the video to the Adafruit YouTube channel. Had PR emerged that fixed blank keywords being added to pyproject.toml sometimes when using cookie cutter. Address the feedback on the GPS library type annotations PR, which merged today. Submitted PR to allow the Adafruit logging library to be more CPython compliant, but not require a name for a logger, which gives you the root logger. Finished up the GitHub action that compiles MPy files, zips them, and attaches them to releases, which should help people creating CircuitPython projects create those files as they develop their code. This week, catching up on PR reviews, merge the merge in the change to the MQTT library that makes it keyword only when instancing. Continue turning our own CI process into composite actions so Adabot isn't needed to update them all anymore. Uh, still hoping to revive the image transfer feature for the Bluefruit Connect library. Looking at making a helper library that makes it easy to use pastebin services like pastebin and GitHub Gist. So I'm hoping to get that in in the next few weeks. And then in personal news, moving to a new apartment over the next few weeks. Uh, so a lot of putting things in boxes. And that is status update. Thanks, everyone. Next up is in the weeds. Uh, in the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. Uh, this is the type of situation where somebody posts their issue and uh, or question or problem and uh, we can all talk about it uh, at whatever length is needed to resolve um, the answer, etc. So first up, I have one from Tactric, who is uh, text only. Uh, the GitHub action, there's a, there's a link here. The GitHub action for building MPy files is called using the owner's name. So I can either transfer it to the Adafruit or CircuitPython GitHub organization, depending on which the script would be called using. Um, is one preferable to the other? My vote is for CircuitPython because it sounds less like an internal tool, but I'm, I think, not attached to either. Um, I... The CircuitPython org is, is designed for things that multiple people are working on together. There's a there's just like a very specific reason for it. Um, I think transferring it to Adafruit would make the most sense. Um, anybody else have opinions on that? Nope. I am in agreement with you. Yeah, oh. it's not the type of thing that's necessarily like um, worked on by a group of us. Um, and it is for... Lots of the Adafruit libraries will use it, so I yeah. think that makes the most sense as well. Okay. Um, and I think it's fine even if um, this is set up to work on community libraries as well. Um, it's it's still absolutely fine uh, for it to be run through the Adafruit uh, organization. Tectric is typing. Ah, okay. Texture says, yeah, that sounds good, and it'll work the same either way. Great. Uh, next... Yeah, he was just typing what you were saying. He was annotating. Gotcha. Um, so next up, I've got one from Foamy Guy, and I will turn it over to him. All right. Thanks, Kenny. And uh, as I get going, and apologies if any sounds come through, it turns out there's somebody working on a motorcycle outside. I just went and put the window down, so hopefully it's a little better. Um, I have a, a link to an issue in the bundle, um, which is essentially just asking the question on our um, on our actions workflows that generate the images. We have those on the bundle library as well as the learning system library. Um, as I was looking into that a bit this weekend, I came to the realization those seem like they are running on that scheduled basis once a day for all the forks of the repo. So that means if um, you know, somebody forks the bundle or the learning guide in order to put in a PR that we are actually running all those image generations um, every day across all those forks. Um, I think there are some actions that we limit based on the like the owner of the repository. So um, I figured it'd be good to ask if we wanted to do that on those or if there's any reason why we want to keep them mm. generating for everybody. No, 100% we want to limit that. 
Okay. Yeah. If even if you had a reason to want to run it uh, in your repo, such as you're working on developing a change to it, or because you know you thought it was useful and you want to use it in your own project unconnected to Adafruit, you can modify that workflow file once you're in your fork to right. override that and make it run again. So I don't see a reason not to make that change. Okay. I will work on that in both of those repos. I, I looked at my fork or the bundle and I don't see any actions reports. Is your uh, main up to date? Because that's one thing I noticed is that mine was not no it's first not. either, okay. but my main was not up to date enough to actually have the actions in it. Uh, okay, okay. And so yeah, I guess that's a good point. It's not necessarily running for everyone, but it's running for everyone who has Who's main updated. or whatever their default branch is yep, that's updated enough to have those actions. Gotcha. Do you know how old it would have to be to be updated to get that? Um, I do not off the top of my head, but I could probably find out. I want to say like it's somewhere within the last year, I believe, on both of those libraries is when we started doing it, but I'm not sure the the exact timeline. So and just I... go ahead. So if I created a new fork uh, two days ago, then all of that would automatically apply to me. Yeah, you. Yeah, I believe that's the case. Your new fork, I believe, of the bundle would be running that um, that scheduled action. Yeah, if that happened, that's a thing to prepare for uh, Hacktoberfest. Just keep an eye out for that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, there's not too much to do, I guess, other than like, ultimately, we'll after we make this change in the Adafruit repo, then we are still kind of beholden to people to update their own. Um, but I don't think there should be much of anything specific for anyone to do. Okay. Thanks for catching this. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say yes, let's uh, let's do it. That's good. All right. And next up, I have one more, maybe one more. Yes, one more topic uh, from Snaky Maker Cat, who is text only. So I will read this off. Uh, starting from this bug in the audio mp3 module, which lists uh, a link here for 6843, um, I noticed a lot of similar issues opened over time. Since this is a usage problem, I think one way to definitively solve it is to turn mp3 decoder into a singleton and not allow multiple instances of it. Once an mp3 decoder object is created, it could be saved and reused for every new call to the mp3 decoder constructor. Would this be possible? Or desirable in this case and I will let Jeff uh, explain his response yeah so I already typed some notes in and I think uh, you know you're on the right track because this is almost always going to be used as a singleton meaning you're going to create it near the beginning of your program and reuse that object um, however I don't want to actually turn it into a singleton because there are some use cases for having multiple MP3 decoder objects. And in the notes document, I put a snippet of code from an unpublished project called MultiMP3. It uh, used two MP3 decoders and the audio mixer to play one MP3 file called Forest Ambient Loop and then randomly play one of four different bird calls. Um, and it just kind of created a soundscape that never exactly repeated, uh, even though it was based on one repeating loop, adding the other samples in, um, gave it some variety. So unfortunately, I would like to do a project like that someday. And so I don't think it's a good idea to make the MP3 decoder be literally a singleton object, uh, even though that would help a lot of people with their trouble. Uh, can I jump in here? Uh, as a DJ and audio guy, I, I'm pretty sure I can speak for Todd Bot and JP. If we're going to do audio mixer stuff, we need to have multiple samples going at the same time simultaneously. That's 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 a necessary thing. And I mean that works pretty well with wave files because to create a to have a wave file object out there doesn't take much RAM. I think maybe it takes six or eight hundred bytes ballpark, whereas the MP3 decoder takes. I don't remember if it's 40K or 60K, it takes a lot uh, out of RAM and they are big single allocations. And so the considerations for an MP3 decoder are very much different than for a WAV file. And I think, you know, that's what Snaky MakerCat is looking for a way to address. But, you know, ultimately the ability to do multiple MP3 files 
you can do it with care and I wouldn't want to take that away. So thanks for backing me up on that. And I trust you because DJ is right in your um, name here on the server. So. Well, yeah, that was a legit DJ for a while, 10 years. All right. Um, Sneaky Maker Cat is typing. I will uh, let them finish. Um, well, okay, for for audio projects right now, Wave, yes. In the future, we would love to have MP3 just because of the portability. You know, let's say we eventually do get up to 16, 32, 64 megs of RAM and flash and whatever. Though that MP3 stuff is easier if it's if it's not turned into a singleton now versus, hey, you know, down the road, let's change that into the audio core audio mixer stuff you know it's easier just to have it work as an audio mixer kind of now versus trying to fix that in the future although i understand the ram considerations and all that that's it's, it's probably not a good idea right now uh, Sneaky Maker Cat says, uh, just add in big letters then and all the guides that only one instance should be created. Um, and then also mentions that there are boards for music that do have much uh, flash and RAM, but for regular use, it should be made clear uh, that multiple instances kill a project. Got it. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Um, I think we're... Nope. Sneaky Maker Cat isn't done. Uh I want to make sure that uh, this is their topic, so I want to make sure that they. Oh, also that issue can probably be closed then. It's kind of like uh, the thing that Anik Data brought up about the socket pool, where there should only be one; it should be at the top of the file. That should be in a learn guide, as well. You know, in big red letters, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, duly noted. Oh, don't apologize. Um. This is your topic. This is in the weeds. It's, it's supposed to take as long as we as long as we need it to. Uh, so no worries there. Um, okay, uh, with no other topics in place, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, first, I want to mention that the next meeting is Tuesday, on the 11th of October, at the usual time. Um, and I will bring that up again in a moment. <laughs> Uh, this has been the Circuit Python Weekly for October 3rd, 2022. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and Circuit Python, and those of us that work on Circuit Python, consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com/adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held on Tuesday uh, at the time of 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, um, due to a U.S. holiday on Monday. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And we hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>